right. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off just so I'm not distracting. Uh, but we really appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us today. As Carl said, any thoughts, any questions, go ahead and write them down and we will answer almost anything you want to ask. <laughs> today, we want to talk about cord reels, as he mentioned. Now, Crescent does stock a lot of our cord reels, and we offer a wide variety of cord reels. A lot of people think, oh, they're just for industrial, or they're just for certain applications. We have them that are for, as you can see, for weatherproof reels, commercial. We have a lot of air and water reels that you may not have even thought about before, and we even offer them for specific automotive repair shops, static discharge, all kinds of accessories. We will not go through all of these today. I just wanna give you an idea of the breadth of line that we have. But what I really wanna focus on today is our newly uh, redesigned in-reach cord reel, okay? This is a cord reel that used to be a steel unit. Steel holds up great, it's, it's a great product, but it's very heavy, very cumbersome to not only install, but just to carry around. So we went to a cast aluminum design, took out about half the weight, and we also changed them from yellow to black, white, and yellow. Yellow was great because it was, you know, some people called it a safety yellow. Some of us at Hubble called it the Hubble yellow, but it, some people like it. Some people thought it stuck out a little too much. So now if you've got a, maybe it's a drop ceiling, maybe it's a, a painted ceiling, you want you need a white cord reel to blend in, we've got it. If you have a darker ceiling, we've got a, a black cord reel that's just going to blend in. If you've bought our product in the past, you knew that it, it came in 45 foot. And although 45 foot is a very good cord reel length, it was limited. Maybe you didn't need all that length. Maybe you were trying to avoid certain lengths that being drawn all the way out creates issues for you, which we'll discuss a few of those later. So now we make it in 25, 35, or 45 as an option for you. You can get almost anything you want on the back end of it. Meaning, you know, if you want a twist lock, a box, a GFI, a straight blade, just about anything you can imagine, we either have it as an option or you can put it on in your facility or as a contractor. We also changed out our weatherproof reels. Industrial weatherproof reels, they're made for a lot of the maybe outdoor applications, maybe you're, you're working for or, or calling on a bus garage, maybe it's for just specific washdown areas in a food processing plant, myriad of possibilities for these things. But just know that we redesigned these with, uh, you know, every possible market in mind. And I say market, I've got a Publix food, uh, I'm sorry, grocery store down by me, and they have these all hung over the produce section. You go to a lot of schools now, we see these in, the, in our schools. Of course, they're in the industrial plants, but they're being used everywhere nowadays. In the past, we gave you a 20 amp reel, worked great. You wanted a 30 amp reel, eh, we don't really have that. Now we've come out with a 30 amp reel. Not a ton of applications, but there are some. So if you need one of those, if you need something different that we don't talk about today, write it down, bring it up. We would love to hear it. We're always open to new ideas and Alex is looking to always expand this line as well. Here's a great shot of a, a place in Georgia we're putting some cord reels in. You can see they're hung from the ceiling. We do have a bracket, which we'll discuss in just a few minutes to mount it on. But it's the nice new reel with the boxes on the end. One thing I want to point out is that our cord reels come with not only just a, a standard mount, but there's a pivot arm. So where you can kind of see on here, the cable's coming out at a, a 90 degree or a right angle coming down. It may not be an issue, but it would put a little extra stress on there. This will actually, with the removal of a few screws, pivot down 90 degrees so it's straight down. That would be ideal 
And they probably have done this once they've started using these in the facility, I'm, I'm sure. Just know that these, these, again, do move down so you can pivot these things around for you. The boxes on the end is a great, a uh, great way of getting a couple duplexes in there or a duplex in a GFI, whatever you'd want inside of there. We came out with a mounting bracket. If anyone has ever tried to mount a cord rail on your own, it's before it was impossible. You know, it was 75 pounds or 73 pounds, whatever they were, you just couldn't do it. So you had two people on a lift holding a cord reel and you had a third person with probably a drill putting the screws in. Now that we've changed the weight down, that's great, but you still have to have somebody hold it, right? To put the screws in. So what we've come out with is these brackets. They're very lightweight. You, you put them in ahead of time and then the cord reel slides in. And we'll show you a video in just a second on this, very short. But the idea is to make installation quicker. Labor is the biggest part of most jobs now. Maybe you're on the maintenance side, maybe you're on the purchasing side, maybe you're somewhere else in this. But when you're trying to install cord reels, if you, the, the quicker you can do this and the less labor involved, it, it's always more cost effective. We added onto this bracket, and actually made it with a junction box hookup available. You can see in this new part number here. What they would do before is you would mount your cord reel and then you would try to find somewhere to put a junction box to hook up power to it or to hardwire it even. Now we're gonna give you that option to hook that junction box right up on this mount. And then you simply just plug it in right next to it or hardwire in this box right next to it. Makes it much, easier and quicker for installation. Because of bandwidth and because of sound, I won't, uh, we won't play that. I'll just walk through this. It's only 45 seconds. But basically this bracket is a lightweight unit. You see those four screws on the outside, those secure the cord reel. But first what you do is this cord reel bracket gets mounted up. Maybe it's to, to grid work, maybe it's to a, a beam, who knows what you're doing. There's many, many options. Then you take the back screws out, you slide the cord reel in, you put the other screws in, you tighten them up, and that's it. Every contractor, every employee I've talked to in facility who's used this bracket says, oh my goodness, we will use this again and again. It made it so much nicer and easier. We've also seen locations where people are saying, you know, we're doing a lot of pod work in this facility and things change on a regular basis. So we only need 16 cord reels, but there might be 20 locations. So they're, they're putting up 20 brackets and then buying 16 cord reels and as needed, they're moving them around. That is a great option for you. This to me is our perfect cord reel. If you're looking for one, either for your facility to, to, to spec in, maybe it's for a school, anywhere you can imagine, it's gonna have basically everything you need. So this is gonna give you 40 foot of 12.3 SJO cord. So 45 foot. If you need less, of course, you know, 25, 35, whatever you want. But 45 foot is, is a great length. It goes pretty much anywhere you would want it to, especially if it's a tall uh, area. I go, go back to my grocery store. I believe ours is mounted 20 foot in the air, so it gives them a lot of, um, a lot of options. In September, these are going to come standard with uh, Tampa-resistant duplexes. And where that's big is when you look at schools specifically, now, I, I know we're going to get people here from various states and you're on various codes. I understand that. But if you're looking specifically at the 2020 code, which a lot of states have adopted or in the middle of adopting, it says any receptacle that is five and a half foot or below in an educational facility must be tamper resistant. If you're on the 17 code, it's really more elementary and below. Uh, maybe some middle schools, but 2020 is education across the board. Now, logic says, well, this cord reel is mounted, pick a height, 12 foot in the air. It, it doesn't need to be 
tamper resistant. Well, then you start talking to the inspectors and it might depend on who your inspector is and their interpretation of the code. Because as you draw this down, you're not using it seven foot in the air and let's say the whole basketball team using it or volleyball team. They're probably pulling it down to about four and a half, five foot. Now it's in that questionable gray area. It's under five and a half foot. Does it need to be tamper resistant? That really depends on your local inspector again. And it depends on how they interpret that code. We would just suggest why not use tamper resistant? It's going to be a, a standard on this reel and it would make the most sense for every application. Maybe it's in a public area and you're worried about kids doing things that kids do. Let's just say it that way, right? It's going to give you your multifunctional arm. It's going to have GFI protection built in. You can see that GFI unit built in line, which we're going to get, we're going to, get to in the next slide. And also, uh, the ratchet can be disengaged. You may have an application um, you're looking at where you don't want that ratchet to be working. Well, whatever your application is, we can work it, work it through it with you. You contact your local Crescent salesman and they will get you all the information on these cord reels, how they operate, different variations. They can get you a brochure with all of our products we're going to show you today, cut sheets, just everything possible. Open neutral protection. I, I don't want to bore you with this, so I won't go in detail, and I wouldn't expect you to be too concerned about it. But the big deal on this is that you cannot put a GFI, uh, a GFI you'd buy from Crescent off the shelf, just a receptacle, in a box for a cord reel. It will not work. It is not going to meet code for you, and that's going to be a problem down the line. Okay, if a wire gets nicked, if the cord gets cut somehow and the neutral gets severed, a GFI receptacle will not notice that. If you look at one of these boxes here, this standard unit we, we put on a lot of these, it's got a double duplex or a GFI module, depending on what, you know, when you bought it and how things worked. But we're going to strongly suggest that you do, uh, put a GFI in line on these. The GFI in line is this, this unit here. It's a double pole unit built into there. And it's going to recognize if something happens. Again, it's all about safety. More and more, we see GFIs being called out on uh, in code and for specs and for your buildings. And it, it the, eventually, they're going to be everywhere. I think probably in five years, every receptacle is going to have to be GFI tamper resistant. It just feels like that, right? So what it comes down to also is with six foot of water, you must have GFI, period. Well, let's say you, you want to put a 45 foot cord reel in your facility. Like, okay, this is going to be great. We're going to put it in. I put a 45 foot cord reel in. I have heard from several people in different states the inspector pulled that cord reel out all 45 foot or as far as you can. And then all of a sudden, it's within six foot of a water cooler, of a sink, of something else like that. And they ding them and say, this has to be GFI protected. Well, remember, you can't just go back in and put a GFI receptacle in this. That, that is not going to work for you. So if you're concerned about that at all for your facility, what you guys are trying to accomplish, uh, I would strongly suggest this unit with the GFI built in, it will take care of virtually everything you could possibly imagine. Okay. Here's a little nomenclature for you. Part numbering system. Uh, HBL, you may figure it out, is for Hubble. And then I is for our new inReach series. So all the new reels we offer now are going to be HBLI. And if you're, again, you can always go to your Crescent salesman. You can get the brochure from them. But it's just an idea of how we put our numbers together. If you see a part number and go, what in the world is that? 45 is 45 foot of cord. 12.3 is, imagine that, 12.3. And then all these options here. Now, you know, it's hard to stock all these options. So we're going to do our best to keep what we can on the shelf for you.
but just know that these are all options for you at one point. And again, we would strongly suggest that reel with the GFI and the tamper resistant cord reels. And these do all come in yellow, white, or black now. This is a shot, I believe, out of North Carolina lab they're putting together. It's a healthcare lab. So there's a few other things involved here besides cord reels, but you'll see they have our cord reels mounted in the ceiling. Now, to a Hubble salesman or, or probably a Crescent salesman, this is a great view. For you, you may be going, okay, that's, that's interesting. They're in the ceiling. What, what does this do? Well, if your ceiling height is 10 foot or higher, this is probably not an issue. If your ceiling height is a standard eight foot high and you put that cord reel down, that's, ah, I think the real, the, uh, uh, real housing is about 14 inches. That's a concern, okay? Because now you're running into issues of height, especially with taller people running into things, bumping into things. We would rather you didn't mount it like this on a drop ceiling, but that you mounted it in a drop ceiling. In the past, if you wanted to put it, these units here up in the ceiling, you had an issue because most drop ceilings now are plenum rated, a lot of them at least, right? Got a lot of air handling stuff going on. And especially in certain municipalities, you will not put anything in a plenum rated area that is not plenum rated. I mean, it, it, it kind of makes common sense, but that means you can't put a cord reel in the ceiling. That's not in a plenum rated enclosure. No one made one before we came out with this. So the idea is it's gonna fit in your, your grid work for your drop ceiling. It's gonna be in a one by two spot for you. You use a two by two unit or a two by four or whatever you want for your drop ceiling, but it will fit standard in there. It's powder coat white painted to match everything. It's gonna have rollers on the front doors so your cable will come in and out easily. Sometimes you'll see people say, well, I wanna put this in a drop ceiling. I didn't know it was available. So they have one fab shot. It's typically two to three times the cost and they're not UL uh, approved shop. This will be a fully a UL approved unit. Now, the one thing to note, we do offer commercial grade cord reels. They do not fit in here. This is more of our industrial line, the HBLI, as we said, the InReach. It's gonna give you, the, again, the GFI, and all those other options, but it's not made for the lower grade. And unfortunately, it's not made for other manufacturers. We're not trying to, to discount you know, their units or anything, we just, have it fit perfectly for our mounting bracket, the way it works, the way it hooks up. And it's gonna give you a perfect solution for plenum rated and ceiling mount units. You can see in here, we get a junction box option for you. You can throw in there. Maybe you wanna hardwire it. Maybe you wanna plug it in. And, and, and that's, that's something you don't wanna discuss uh, with people in your inspectors or uh, engineers or whoever at your facility as well, because some people such as uh, OSHA inspectors consider a plugged in unit as temporary. And you say, what, what do you mean temporary? It's a cord reel. Well, if a cord reel is plugged in, you can theoretically unplug it, which means it's temporary power, which means some inspectors will say, you absolutely have to have a GFI on that. If it's hardwired, uh, if you're not within six foot of wire or water, they're probably not going to care as much. They're not going to care at all. Here's some nice screenshots of some uh, enclosures being installed up in uh, Wisconsin. You'll notice again, it fits well in the grid work. This is, uh, has a nice film on the front cover so it doesn't get scratched up, doesn't get marred up or marked up during installation. And then it might be tough to see but this is actually being hung by threaded rod from the ceiling. So you can adjust it to fit exactly where you need to for that grid work. I'm not saying it's super easy, but it's a very easy installation. It's a very easy installation, okay? Now that is our industrial or weatherproof cord line products. I wanna to touch on just a few other quick products in our last minutes. We just recently came out 
with a CAT6 data reel unit. And we get asked for this quite a bit now. Hey, I'd like to have a, a data drop inside my facility. Maybe it's a plant. Maybe it's a school, because we see more schools putting cord reels now in now than we ever have. So this is a 50 foot reel with CAT6. It's going to give you uh, just uh, you know a perfect setup for it. This is not just CAT6 that's put on a spool. It is made for it. It's designed to be put on it. You can't just throw it on a spool and it's going to work great. There's a lot of engineering on these. They do use our mounting brackets. We do offer swivel base brackets. I forgot to mention on our industrial, our weatherproof and these data reels. And this data reel will also fit inside our plenum rated enclosure. Again, you can have it up out of the way. It, it just has a more aesthetically pleasing look, especially in a university. Maybe you're trying to hook up a whiteboard and all your powers in the ceiling. Maybe you wanna run a data cable down to something. It's gonna be a very nice finish. Our most recent launch is tool balancers. And we have these all the way down from, as you can see, a half. Hey, Bill, are you still there? Lost your lost your sound. Um, uh, I can uh, I can take over this slide. I don't okay. know what happened on Bill's end, but uh, hey, hey everyone, I'm Alex Eager. I'm the product manager at uh, Hubble in Shelton, Connecticut, for uh, cord reels and these balancers here. So, not sure what happened to Bill's audio, but I'll uh, I'll take over this slide. So, like Bill was saying, this is a recent addition to our line. Um, we have light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty balancers, and we're typically seeing these. So, lost the, uh, the presentation, but anyway, um, we're typically seeing these in manufacturing facilities that have um, a, a different assembly workstations. So if you can imagine, instead of having a tool on a bench, and even if it weighs five pounds or so, a hand tool that it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but if you have a worker on a line eight hours a day, every day, uh, you can see where that might get a little bit heavy after some while. So, oh, Bill texted me that he lost power, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, so these are going to be used on workstation kits, benchtop kits within a manufacturing facility, most likely, where they balance a tool um, at a specified height, and you can more ergonomically manufacture that way in terms of assembly. Um, the heavier duty ones, you know, are sometimes used for super heavy duty uh, power tools where maybe you're building crates or you're, you're doing big crate shipping, and that's where those are going to come into hand in handy. Um, we've, we've also seen them on some interesting applications, one of them being a natural gas vehicle fueling station. So if you can imagine, they have um, these different, they have these natural gas vehicle uh, fuelers, basically. And instead of having the cables that go to the vehicles laying on the ground or however they were doing it before, they now have a balancer on each of those um, stations so that they can balance the cord and not have them laying across the floor. Um, Bill, are you back? Uh, this is Carl. I Bill sent me the yes. presentation. So okay, Alex, can you hear me? If, we can hear you now. Okay, if you want to keep going, that's fine. Um, sure. I, Let me. I'm um, showing my screen. So okay, let's just use yours. I I apologize, everyone. I we have. <laughs> We have storms going on. We were discussing earlier, and I actually lost power for a second, so I apologize. No, that's all good, Bill. I was um, I took over this slide just to present on it while you were gone. Um, so uh, let me just wrap it up here on this slide, and we can go to the next one. Um, so yeah, basically we have three different levels of these tool balancers. They can be used to balance tools, hoses. We also offer some workstation kits in case you have a facility that is looking to incorporate a, um, a bench top system for their, their line workers, we can accommodate that. Um, but what we really specialize in is, is, are these balancers here. So, you know, you can see half a pound all the way up to 308 pounds. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much what you need to know on these things. Excellent. Thank you, Alex, appreciate that. 
I just want to do real quickly one slide on our commercial reels. Just know if you have a, a, a real light duty application you're looking for the one on the left curl showing, it has 40 foot of 12.3 with a triple tap, a circuit breaker and a detachable handle. This is really uh, a, a great product. If you're just, you know, you need something that's not extra heavy duty, uh, but you're looking for 40 foot of 12.3. All the way to the right is a very similar one. It's white cord. And you say, well, you know, we like the idea of the white cord. We also make our 40 foot cord reel in one specific one option with a white cable. And this is a smaller one. It's got 16.3, 10 amp. But maybe this is something, again, very light duty. You're just running some small stuff around. And then the one in the middle, this is what I like to call our auto reel. So the idea of this is you can use it with a fluorescent light and, you know, everybody likes to have that in a garage area or, you know, maybe it's in the back of a building, wherever you're wanting to use these. It's specifically designed for those repair shops. It's a car dealership, something of that nature where OSHA and the NEC say you can't have something that with a potential spark within 48 inches of the floor. So what happens is when it hits 48 inches, it automatically kills power to that spot and down, which is just a great option, not only to meet code, but for safety. Okay, thank you, Carl. And, uh, and um, one couple of quick comments. Uh, <clears throat> we were talking a little earlier that, you know, a lot of car dealerships, you know, everything's connected to the internet anymore, that that might be a, um, that cat six cord reel for diagnostics and a lot of the, a lot of the new vehicles. Uh, so don't overlook just because it's a, a auto dealer that they'd only want, uh, you know, a, a trouble light, if you will, or an extension cord type situation. So make sure that, uh, <clears throat> that you talk to them about that also. And with that, I'm going to roll into uh, questions. And if you've got any questions, I see uh, several have come in. What we'll do is uh, answer them as they come in. And uh, thanks again for Bill and Alex taking the time to share their awesome product line. Here we'll. Uh, um, <clears throat> so. The first question is, does a cord reel have to be GFCI protected? Well, does it have to be? No, not really, but we would suggest it for a few reasons. One, if it's a longer cord reel, again, if you're gonna end up pulling it within six foot of water, it could be an issue. Or if it's gonna be uh, a, a situation where, you know, you're gonna be in a, a school lab with kids, boy, we would really suggest that because kids just do the darndest things. I, I know when I was a kid, I was, uh, oh, you can be trouble as a 13, 14, 15 year old kid. <laughs> I'm still trouble. Well, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Are tamper resistant receptacles required in cord reels? That's gonna depend on your code uh, for your state and your area. So if you, as an example, if you are in the state of Nebraska is, and Wisconsin and some of the others, they are on 2020, then yeah, if this is going to school, you absolutely will. If you're going to Indiana, and I think they're on, oh my goodness, they're on an old code. I'll just say that. Uh, you will not necessarily need that depending on your application, but it's always suggested. How big are the plenum rated enclosures? Uh, I believe they are one foot by two foot. And that way it fits very nicely into your plenum, uh, into your uh, drop ceiling grid. Okay. <clears throat> are all the I-series cord rails the same size? Um, I can answer that one. So. Please. We have basically two different sizes when it comes to the HBLI, the in-reach series cord reels. You have, for example, on a 12.3 standard cord reel, no matter what the length is, 
Um, those are about the spool itself is maybe three and a half inches, and the entire unit is probably about seven, uh, maybe not eight to nine inches wide. When you get into other size cables, so if you order a 10-3, you know, for 30 amp applications, or you order um, a 10-4 or, or one of the larger weatherproof ones, this, to accommodate the larger cable, we have to use a wider spool. So the footprint and the mounting and everything and the height are all the same. But when you start getting into the larger cables for 30 amp or weatherproof, um, the, the spool itself widens by about a couple of inches. Um, so one thing to keep in mind while we say for the plenum box that it fits almost all of our in-reach reels, um, just please keep in mind that for the wider ones, like if you're trying to order a 10-4, it's not going to fit in there. It's a little bit too wide for that enclosure. Um, so yeah, to keep it short, two different sizes, but uh, same, same mounting footprint on them. And just one comment, uh, they came out, Hubble came out with their bracket, uh, the quick mount bracket that allows the, the J box to go uh, on the side, uh, easily mount on the side. One note is that the J box is not included uh, that way you can put the appropriate J box that you want to use, whether it's a, a <clears throat> two gang or a FS type box or whatever. So uh, just so, just so you know, that box is not included. And I, uh, Carl, I see a question coming in on the chat here saying, okay. are there plans in the works to make cat six cord reel that will be a little more affordable than the one presented, possibly one that doesn't require the aluminum cast housing. So good question. Um, the one we're currently offering and we have going to market is a little bit pricier. Um, the, but the reason is it's really the only one that I've seen in all my research that is as an industrial strength as it is. Um, you know, we see the ones that are kind of similar to what we showed on our commercial line with the, the cheaper housings and whatnot. So we wanted to come out first and foremost with the um, heaviest duty data reel in the marketplace for those tougher applications. When, you know, I have been looking at options for the less expensive ones that we see online for just a couple of hundred bucks. The issue with those is we brought them into our, um, our lab here in Shelton, Connecticut. And while they claim CAT6 online, we haven't seen one that actually performs anywhere near CAT6 uh, data requirements. So we've been, um, we've been looking into that but we want to be able to say, you know, this thing is definitively CAT6. Um, so it's going to require a little bit of engineering work to make that happen. But, um, you know, hopefully within the next year, we have um, a lower cost version of that thing. But for customers that require the heavy duty industrial, we're still going to offer that and it still meets CAT6. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Alex, that the uh the actual cat six cord is a, is way more robust than you might get in a thousand foot real box. Yeah. So while I'm not an expert on the, you know, the data side of things, that cord is specifically designed for portable applications. So it's got a little bit different jacketing on it. It's uh, got the stranded cables in there. So, you know, the patch cords that you're used to seeing where they come in a thousand foot spool, you know, you can't just slap the, one of those onto a, a cord reel because these things are wound up, they're, you know, sprung, they're um, pulled out and retracted all the time. So the cable itself is, um, is a little bit heavier duty on it. Great. Well, if we don't have any more questions, um, yeah, we'll give it another minute. If you have any questions, go ahead and type those in um, on the uh, chat or the Q&A and we'll address those as, uh, as we go. Uh, Carl, if I could just add one last thing while we're waiting. Sure. We did, uh, we, we did come out with a newer brochure. Uh, it does incorporate the industrial reels, the commercial, it has the plenum box, the data reel. So once again, you know, contact your local Crescent salesperson and if nothing else, we can, you know, they can shoot you out a PDF version of this. You can look through this and see what you're interested in. Okay, we did have uh, 
One question coming in from our Ontario IES locations. They want to know who their sales rep is for that area. So um, we can certainly get you that information, Cecil. Well, um, great presentation. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, great products available. A lot of great application problem solvers uh, for, <clears throat> for just about any and every application. So uh, the, one, the one note that uh, I would make to the Crescent team is that uh, you, <clears throat> you have a, uh, a pretty good sized basket of products here and that uh, you know, there, there's something for almost every application and uh, you know, typically uh, one cord reel doesn't go out. So make sure that uh, we touch base with uh, all the options. So with that, uh, we're going to end today's uh, question and answer period. And once again, this will be recorded or it is being recorded and we will share this out afterwards. So thanks, Bill and Alex, for the presentation. And uh, we will make this presentation uh, slide deck available for you also. So with that, I'm going to stop uh, the recording and the event. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the time, everybody. Yeah, thank you.